Every child is born with the potential to be creative. There's no doubt about that. It's the first part of ourselves that develops from birth. It's the creative part of our brain. People never cease to amaze me with their stories. I never thought I'd be doing it in a million years when I was at scale. Like, well, there's this massive satisfaction. There's this massive feeling of being alive. We are the Dundee Literati, educated on the streets in a book brain sky. We observe and write, sometimes lose the tatty. Burning issues, pit doing an ink, stories for the past that might you think, relevant to both the snob and the mink, and the working class punters that enjoy a wee drink. It's something that's really enjoyable to myself, and there's a great reaction for the crowd, uh, especially with the humour and that. It's, it's just something that makes me happy, and the whole thing with mental health is there's a lot of stigma attached. I would say writing is a fantastic therapy for possibly getting you through. You could write about anything, how you're feeling at the time. You might have anger, happiness, love, hate. Writing's a great outlet. Life just stopped, basically. The clock stops ticking. It just closes down, shuts all the doors on pleasure in life. That's, you know, the misery of severe depression. I think art helped me to reframe experiences over time. It also helped me to make sense of the, the trauma that I'd been through, all the losses that I'd faced, the loss of identity, um, which people experiencing mental illness all face, um, loss of status in society, loss of work, loss of purpose. <laughs> My photography is just a way of exploring the idea of how people interact with each other and how we deal with each other, how we go about living our lives. Uh, that's what interests me creatively. The reason that it's important for me to be creative is it gives a great deal of meaning to my life. It can be very important as a process of discovery to learn more about yourself. And I think the more you know about yourself, the more you can either feel better about yourself or if you don't feel good about yourself to understand why and to start to change that. People do talk a lot about a kind of cycle, don't they? That you somehow sort of some, somehow return to childhood um, or childlike behaviour towards the, the end of your life. My work looks at how people deal with things and don't deal with things in their life and when they're kind of pushed to extremes. So in those kind of quite subtle ways, it's connected to everyday mental health. Won't you spare me over till another year? It makes me feel good that I'm contributing something, that I'm affecting people. Sometimes when I show, I make people cry. I don't really want to make people cry, but it's in a good way. It's quite a cathartic way. It's in a way that it's like, yeah, I'm not alone. From the other side. Comedy as a creative process is to do with your instinct. If I'm writing something and there's a, a blank bit of paper, there's nothing on it at nine o'clock, right? But if I stare at it long enough and I focus hard enough, eventually words appear on that page and I made them. And then two or three hours later, or maybe four days later, there is something on that page which didn't exist and it came from nowhere but inside me. When that happens, is is wonderful. In general, there's a great power in making and taking time out. It really blocks out everything else. If you're focused on making something and you're engaged in the in the material and the processes involved in it, then it can really have a meditative effect because it, it blocks out everything else and it really um, it gives you a bit of space and and freedom. I get a good buzz off it, especially when people say they like, you know, what I've done. And then in my case, it's often to really to relate to humour. So, uh, you know, if I, if I hear people laughing when they're looking at my work, that is, I've achieved what I set out to do. And uh, so you're sort of spreading um, good feelings in other people, hopefully. The um, determination to keep drawing and painting, that was my way. But there are many ways to be creative as there are people. 
doesn't matter. Uh, whatever way um, you, you express yourself, it's bound to help towards a sense of um, well-being. Try not to worry about the end product. It's not really about the end product. The important thing is just to do it, just to keep doing it um, every day. And don't let people put you down. Don't let people tell you um, whether it's right or wrong, because there's no rights and wrongs. There's absolutely no rights and wrongs. It's really good to sort of have that sense of achievement when you've been making something that you know you've actually done from scratch or you've designed it or you physically have the object in front of you. It doesn't have to be something that's really technically amazing or technically good in any way. And I also think that you shouldn't worry about what other people think and it should just be something that's to do with yourself and how it makes you feel. to be expressive in, in any way that you're comfortable with. Certainly writing music and performing music particularly is quite cathartic. It's really important for anybody to try and engage as many creative activities as possible. So there's an extra certain something that creative activities uh, can give to people with mental health difficulties. Yeah. Cause if I had one more chance to change my life If I would have known I can't change my mind To start from the beginning and get my right But it's never too late to start a new way It's not exclusive to artists, you know, creativity lives in all formats, all professions Cooking, cleaning, being a mother, being a teacher Creativity is really that that lifeline, it keeps us alive, it keeps us in love, it keeps us healthy. Everyone has it in them to be creative and it doesn't have to be a painting, it doesn't have to be a drawing. You don't have to be a Picasso to express yourself. Mm -hmm.